think at some point we're going to see that there isn't this fad of social. There isn't these digital platforms that are one way marketing. There's just different ways we communicate. And the more that we are authentically ourselves in all of those places where we can network and meet other people, I think the more effective we will be at building relationships. That's what Kelly Hoey had to say about networking and building relationships on one of our early shows. And it helps frame a concept we grapple with on Lawson. We talk about with Stephanie Hanna later in this show. What does it mean to be authentic? Maybe it depends on the environment. On LinkedIn, on Instagram, in court, in a meeting, in a fight, behind closed doors, waiting for boarding group nine to get on the damn plane already. Why are there nine boarding groups? We are different versions of ourselves depending on our surroundings and also who we think surrounds us. Watching us, judging us, swiping, sharing, discovering. In an always on world that marketers dream of, is every moment, no matter offline or on, a brand defining moment. And so, worthy of a heaping scoop of authentic you sauce. For the fractured marketer questing for a brand, it's hard to know which authentic you need to be. To be maximally aware of networking possibilities in every situation or opportunity is to be a used car salesman. But to blithely walk through your days, ignoring the relationships and networks already around you is to be a used car salesman with a philosophy degree. In the end, most lawyers avoid marketing and networking and branding their authentic selves because it all feels vapid and disconnected from their core service and function. But then, six months later, They're looking for ways to grow their book of business again and jump from solution to solution without solving anything. Networking, relationships, and the 85% of non-technical skills that lawyers need to master to be successful today. Coming up on Lawson. Let's do it. Lawson, the podcast for law firms. Powered by Consult Webs. Welcome back to Lawson, the only vitamin fortified legal marketing podcast to be banned from the Olympics. We're here to inform, educate, and entertain the legal community on the latest in personal and professional developments. I am marketing tight end, Jake Sand. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I am marketing tight end, Jake Sand. <laughs> What a funny, what a funny position. I am, I am, I am marketing tight end Jake Sanders. And with me is the quarterback of PPC, Paul Julius. Paul, why were we banned from the Olympics? I can't remember. If you recall, uh, I think it's because their definition of vitamin fortified and our definition of vitamin fortified were a little bit different. Mm, it always is. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. It always is. What are those? They're vitamins. Oh, it's, really? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> You're smoking your vitamins? <laughs> it's, it's an indigenous Aromatic remedy. <laughs> indigenous. <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's uh, mainline uh, the, the rest of this show and tell people what's coming. All right. On the show, we bust up some myths around networking, and then we interview Stephanie Hanna from The Other 85 to learn what non-technical skills lawyers need to focus on to succeed. And then we hook Stephanie up with five questions we ask everyone. Pull up a plate. It's the Hot Takes Buffet. The hot take buffet today is uh, <laughs> featuring an article by Sam Glover on the lawyerist.com. It's entitled How to Network, Get Out and Do Things with People. Paul, you found this one. Uh, t- t- tell us about it. it th- th- our interview uh, with Stephanie centers around networking, relationship building as, as sort of that non-technical aspect of lawyer success. What, what, it, what do you think? So first, I want to say that uh, Sam Glover is actually the founder of Lawyerist. Oh yeah. Uh, so this isn't just some Yahoo. Uh, this is this is well founded. <laughs> and there's some things here like how to fail at networking, what things to do, and which people to do them with. Mm-hmm. Skip the gurus, learn to make friends. You know that that's the one that really stuck out to me. And and I like this. It's very very practical. It says build relationships. 
There's no magic to it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this is focusing on things like that aren't, you know, hey man, I'm gonna, you know, tag you on LinkedIn and stuff like that. And, and don't get me wrong, that stuff is good. Right. You know, we're we're all good with that stuff. But um the point is to take it there there's value in taking these things offline to actually build a relationship and not just, you know, there there's more to it. And we we've seen this happen before with people who think that, you know, uh it's a great marketing strategy to just be wacky on Twitter. Um, but that right. doesn't translate well, you know. Right, right. Well, and so most people aren't wacky enough on Twitter. Um, but but Sam's point is really great. Because he says, whatever networking may be, real networking is just getting out and doing things with people. Mm. His, his point is to sort of take away the idea of networking and building and developing. And what you're really trying to do is just be friendly. And, and when he says how to fail at this is if you're trying too hard, you're just trying to make friends. And those friends are professionally going to kind of, a, you know, you know, bolster your, your presence, but it's, it's weird. If you go into it, looking for it, you'll be a little bit more, uh, depressed maybe, or, or you'll feel more anxious about the, the whole affair. The thing that I took away was that you'll, you'll, you'll fail at networking is if you try too hard mm. to always make the network connection. And just like you said, it isn't always about connecting on LinkedIn, um, or, or throwing business cards at people. It's, it's a little bit more nuanced. Stephanie talks about that, um, and Sam really eloquently lays it out in this this article. So I'm I'm a fan of it. What do you well? So so failing, trying too hard, in the, in the article it gives an example of you know whipping out a business card, you know right. while you're volunteering at a homeless shelter or hanging out with your college <laughs> friends. Right. And I think those are a little absurd, uh, on purpose. But mm. I, I think you know I think we can both think of some some pretty good examples of just. You you can tell when you've crossed a line. I, I, I think, <laughs> you know, people have personal space in real life. Sure. And I think there's a, a kind of a digital buffer there as well. Hmm. Hmm. I think something that Stephanie says later is that, you know, a lot of networking is uh, we talk about um, giving is hmm. it, you have you can't you can't always be taking you can't hmm. always be asking for something. Mm -hmm. You have to come from it for providing value or something for free mm -hmm. or just something like, you know, like we talk later about, you know, maybe tagging people in on an article that, that you think would be interesting to them. Not that mm -hmm. you wrote, not that's promoting your blog, um, stuff like that. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like yeah. there's a, there's kind of a, a selflessness to it, you know, like, like, like when you're friends with someone, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or not anymore because I tried to sell them this Asahi berry juice, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it was a, I had to sell them a dozen of them. It's hard though, because I, uh, you, I think Stephanie, it's different for you and I though. I well, really don't, no, but no, I think it, with the gig economy approaching self personal branding, I mean, people are really going here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're developing your leadership skills. Is it on brand? And, and is this part of my plan? And, and I think, uh, people don't know if it is a networking, uh, opportunity. They don't know if it's a, am I going to be on brand or am I, is this off brand? Or they don't know if it's against their narrative that they've created. So Stephanie's Stephanie has some suggestions of, of having templates on how to respond to things. Cause she's like, not everybody has a ready answer. Not everybody's ready. Uh, so you should kind of gear yourself towards the certain situations where you find anxiety or you you seem to avoid. Have some templates, some ready questions. Um, but but you have to sort of fake this until you make this. And so it's hard when you say, I don't think people need reminders on this isn't a networking thing or this is just a friend thing or this isn't business, this is just personal. Everything is smearing together in a weird way. Where I'm not sure if how I'm behaving on this channel will reflect on me negatively on this channel, or if I behave personally, will this if impact me professionally? So I think it it is a little bit murky, and I think people do need to have those things defined because um, it is about making friends, but you still need to have the networking component in there. It is about networking, but you can't forget the friend. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it, absolutely. Well, and it's and it gets even weirder because now you're starting to wonder, like, well, is it 
you know, is it odd of me to ask this person or right. to refer? Like if I refer now, it's weird because if I've got a group of people and like I want to refer someone over to someone else. Yeah. Um, and then now I'm wondering- I'm, it's kind of <laughs> like if we're friends, I'm kind of vouching for this guy. You know what yeah. I mean? Right. Um, Good point. It's yeah. it's very strange. And I know for me, I'm more of an introvert. Right. So mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and by that, I don't mean like I, you know, I sit in a corner and you know, talk to myself or whatever. Right. Well, you're doing it's, it's a good not, job now. I do. Well, I mean, yeah, I do talk to myself a lot, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's not like a, it's not like social anxiety um, or, right, or right. something like that. And nothing against uh, that. I mean, a lot of times it's hand in hand. Uh, for me, it's not that. It's just that, um, you know, being in these social situations takes a lot out of me. I don't get it. Like my wife, I know you're more of an extrovert where mm-hmm. it just feeds on it. Um, so for me, having something like a, a, um, a, a like a template, or a plan or, or something like that where I, I can know where I'm starting and where this is going to end up and how much uh, like emotional energy I have to invest in mm-hmm. this, you know, kind of allows me to budget that. So it doesn't become something else that stresses me. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I'm not really yeah. sure. It's weird, man. I mean, even, you know, even, even at the level of social interaction I'm at, I don't, I don't think you and I approach it the same way at all. It's, it's a little bit more of a stretch. You know, yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, I, I think you, you won't get what you don't ask for. Well said. And I, and I think a lot of people want the network effects, um, but they don't want to do the network. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, it's hard because Sam's main point here is that it happens offline with relationships and with people it can be compounded online. It can start online, but it yeah. still has to have an offline component eventually um, to really have a cementing and lasting effect. And he 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 ends this um, he ends this piece really brilliantly. You know, I'll just end it with here, and then we'll go to the interview with um, yeah. Stephanie. Uh, yep. But he he says, I know networking scares the heck out of the introverts who would much rather sit at home and bang out LinkedIn updates. But no matter how effective your social media campaign. And I have my doubts. Getting out and doing things with people is the most effective way to generate referrals, find mentors, and discover resources. After these messages, we'll be right back. On the streets of the internet, where the distractions are high and competition is higher. A lawyer is only as good as their website. When it comes to legal services, lawyers are the experts. But when it comes to legal marketing online, that's when ConsultWebs takes the wheel. Any lawyer looking to grow their business online can generate more leads from their website by hiring ConsultWebs. Since 1999, we've tested thousands of digital advertising strategies for hundreds of law firms across the country, so we know what flips and what flops. For more information, go to consultwebs.com. And now for a lawsome interview. Stephanie Hanna has been coaching law students and attorneys for the past decade through her consulting firm, The Other 85, which believes that 85% of attorney success comes from mastering non-technical skills. Stephanie helps lawyers strengthen their networking, build their reputation, and develop their careers. Having been a prosecutor, judicial staff attorney, solo practitioner, magistrate, and law firm associate, Stephanie understands the dynamics at play in each of those environments and brings that experience to her work and to the Lawson podcast today to talk about the other 85. Stephanie, welcome aboard. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about the Genesis story for the other 85. How did this idea come about? And then tell us where you're at today. Yeah. So this idea came about after being new to Columbus, Ohio. So I went to law school in Toledo, Ohio, moved to a city. I didn't know anybody, didn't have a job. Market was awesome, as we all remember, in 2008 Mm -hmm. and really just had to start meeting people. And one relationship after another, I quickly learned that it wasn't so much what was on my resume, where I went to school, what I knew, but who I knew and more importantly, who knew me. And I started to get a lot of opportunities, um, through jobs, board opportunities, speaking opportunities, articles, that sort of thing. And it was all because of relationships. And over time, I started to become a go-to resource among my peers and colleagues for people looking for leadership opportunities. And 
kind of at the same time recognizing that there was nothing really teaching this stuff. There were things for law firm associates at the very beginning of their careers, and there were continuing education geared towards the first, you know, zero to two years. And then when you were getting ready to make partner, they would sometimes bring in a sales coach or start paying attention to your relationships and how you were going to generate business. But there was just a really big gap kind of in that three to 10 years of practice that wasn't, nobody was really specifically teaching this stuff. And there was an expectation that you had to know how to do it. And as retention rates in law firms is a, is a big hot topic. And I just started to see the parallels and started to think there's a gap here and I know I can help fill it. And so fast forward, um, that was last year I started. So I've been doing this officially as a business for a year. And I like to joke that I've been doing it for free for a decade and just as a business for, <laughs> for a year. Um, and so today I work with attorneys individually and in small groups and also working with law firms whether it's their associate groups or women's groups and help them take the work out of networking and work on the stuff that's really going to make or break your career. Cause I think the assumption is once you get to a certain level, we're all good lawyers. Um, but I don't want to work with just a good lawyer. I need to work with a lawyer that's good and that I like and that I want to be around and that can accept feedback and criticism from me and that we can grow together. And so those are the things that the other 85 works on. It seems like networking is a huge component to your work. There seems to be a focus on social interaction, mindsets, actual body language. I mean, you're you're in these rooms with these lawyers. It's very analog. And so how do you think technology and social media play into networking for lawyers? Is it a hindrance, an added layer? I mean, you said earlier it was like it wasn't about what was on the resume. Sometimes it isn't about what your social media is, or is it, or how, how, how do you think about that and, and help your clients um, at the other 85, you know, bring technology into it? Yeah. So I really do think technology can be your best friend in this situation. Um, the clients that I work with are busy, um, you know, on top of, you're trying to do all this on top of billing 18, 19 hundred hours a year, 2000, 2100. And you have to find a way to fit it in and you have to find a way to make it easier. Um, one of the biggest obstacles is sometimes you get really into it and it lasts for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and then you burn out. It's not sustainable. And then you're back in your office billing hours all day and never seeing the light of day or, you know, making a new friendship mm -hmm. or relationship. Mm -hmm. So I think technology can really be your best friend and especially social media. Um, there are so many other things that make it easier to automate your outreach. Um, there's a service called Postable, for example, and it will automate greeting cards. And so one of the things I work with clients on are, are you touching your contacts through um, email, through a handwritten note, through a birthday card, at least twice a year. And Postable takes the work out of that. You just put in the name, the address, you can pre-type the content you want to put in the note and set the date and it will do it recurring. You can use a schedule. You can use um, calendar reminders, automate things that just to make your life easier because if it's too hard, you're not going to do it. So I love technology. I have a session that I do with my clients that says you can be the best networker in the world from behind your desk. Um, there's so many things that you can do from your computer and with a handwritten note. And it's just really a matter of finding the time to fit it in and to do it consistently. So I, I have a question about networking, though, and some of these these touch points. And, and um, something that's come up before is that's not natural for a lot of people. Um, <laughs> and, and that's that it can be difficult. Like, I don't. I don't, I'm just not comfortable interacting with people on Twitter or, or on LinkedIn or what am I supposed to say in a note? Um, do you have any kind of advice for that? Like, is there, is there a way to sort of um, break the ice with this or just like a, a simple way to, to start making it a, a habit and learning how to, to get involved without feeling like the awkward person at the party? Yes. Yes. And that's such a huge common hindrance, I would say, is not knowing what to say. And so some of the things that I do from the very beginning with clients is we come up with what are your top three or four common scenarios that you find yourself in where you don't know what to say, um, whether that's inside of a note, say you met somebody and you want to send them a note or an email um, just to make sure they have your contact info and just to kind of solidify that they know who you are. So that's one setting. 
Another setting is I met somebody and now I, there's actually some more info that I want from you and I want to reach out and see if you'll have coffee or lunch with me. And that's another set, subset. And maybe the third one is I actually don't know you, but I saw you on LinkedIn and I think your business or whatever is pretty cool and I want to learn more about it. And so if those are common things that are recurring, that are happening for you, that you want to figure out how to address those, come up with a template and just two or three sentences for each of those situations and have them typed out at your desk and so so that you can use that as a starting point. And so, for example, if it's the situation where you met somebody at an event last week and you just want to make sure they have your contact information, it can be just as simple as, hi, and leave a space for the name. And so I met you at leave a space for the event that you met them at. I just wanted to pass along my contact information. It was great to hear about, if you remember what you guys happened to talk about, stick it in there. If not, leave it out. Hope to be in touch. Talk soon. Sign your name. That's it. It's got to be easy and it's got to be something you can copy and paste with just a little bit of tweaking. Um, And coming up with templates to just make it more natural for you. And it almost sounds counterintuitive, like, well, that's not very natural if it's copied and pasted, but you need starting points and you need to do it once and realize that nothing bad is going to happen, that they're not going to respond to you and say, you're actually very awkward. Stop reaching out (laughs) Yeah. This sounds like a template. (laughs) (laughs) Don't leave the blank in there. Hey, blank. Those are the things that happen in your head though. Like you just have these little narratives. Oh, real busy in the head. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. And you need, you know, you need one, one success, one small win, one low hanging fruit where someone says, Oh, great. Thanks. And then they go about their day. And once you kind of realize like you're not as important as you think you are, like people are not dissecting your emails and your interactions as much as you might think that they are you can kind of get out of your own way and start to make a little bit of progress forward. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'll tell you one, one thing that I find that I've responded to more like on LinkedIn, like a connection request is someone who's just uh, um, pretty direct about it. Just like, Hey, I saw we both are, you know, working in the same, you know, vertical or whatever thought would make sense to connect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you look cool. Yes. And always, always, always put a note in your LinkedIn requests if you don't think the person is going to know who you are. Oh, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we're, yeah, so we're kind of talking about, um, you know, one-on-one or, or like on a person to person level, but can you talk about how you adapt, adapt the other 85 to like a firm wide level and, and what's different about organizations versus one-on-one versus individuals and culture? Like how do you get in there? Yeah, so I'm starting to do more and more firm wide trainings um, with support staff and the whole team because I think it's really starting to be important, um, you know, culture, your whole culture, and everybody's a part of the team. And let's be inclusive and diversity and inclusion is a big piece. And, you know, I actually used to do um, inclusion work before I started the other 85. And there's so much overlap between inclusive work environments and relationship building. Um, It's so, so similar. The same way that you want to treat a potential client is how you want to treat everybody in your office. And, you know, the stats about associates leaving law firms, 81% will leave their law firm within the first five years. And that's a national stat. And they'll tell you it's because they didn't get accountability-based tools and training to help them master the other 85, to help them, you know, know how to talk to people in their office, know how to get work, know how to have those hard conversations. So, I am starting to do training with entire organizations. And what's so cool is that there are so many more similarities than there are differences. And I think once we have a training with attorneys and support staff and paralegals and everybody all in the same space, they kind of realize that they really are on the same team and they're working towards the same, uh, you know, the same end result. And they can start to cross promote each other and to give internal referrals for each other and, you know, suggest each other to be speakers at events or get on a board or, you know, do things outside of the office and it builds morale and it just becomes a better place to work. And it's all from how you interact with each other. Um, And I think that organizations that have brought me in so far, some of the feedback is, you know, it's crazy people now, they want to have lunch with someone that they typically wouldn't have lunch with. It doesn't seem like there's as much inner office kind of politics or cattiness and that stuff will never go away. But I think if you can bring in some sort of level setting workshop or session to kind of 
put everyone on the same page and talk about how we treat each other and how we build relationships internally and externally. I mean, I think you do a great job of setting the tone for the culture that you're trying to create in your organization. Mm. 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 So, and what, so uh, in regards to leaders, um, maybe bringing this stuff, um, to their law firms, how, how do you help, um, sort of a theme that's, it, it seems very re- reduced to the people skills. So if you have those people skills, um, then it's good. But if you don't, I mean, just sort of what Paul was talking about, like, maybe it's not natural for you to, you know, how do you deal with leaders in specific? Um, so they don't get like too egoic about it. It's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's like less about them, but more about you, but they also have to be, it's just, maybe just, I mean, it's very, very packed question. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) No, that's, Okay, but you know, I mean, you're on to something there because the the money talks, right? And I think the statistics and the dollar signs are pointing very clearly to you need to give people this training or they will leave. Um, the market is better than it was ten years ago, and so I I can go to firm X across the street for five thousand more dollars. You know, I don't care because they might treat me better. I'm not sure, but I know that I don't like how I'm being treated here. And there are stats that for um, a leaving associate. Every person that leaves walks out the door, it costs you two hundred to four hundred thousand dollars to find a replacement. Think of all the time to post, go through resumes, schedule interviews, try and fit it on everyone's calendar, extend an offer, go through the negotiation phase. So you're like money is you're hemorrhaging money every time someone leaves. Um, not to mention that's your reputation, right? If I leave and people don't, you know, well, did you like the work you were doing? Yeah, it was great. Did you have clients? Yeah, it was great. You know, it starts, the reputation starts to spread. The word starts to spread. Like, why are so many women leaving firm X? Or why are so many young associates leaving firm Y? Um, And leadership totally notices that um, because it starts to impact their bottom line. Um, Their internal folks start spending way too many, too many hours, you know, looking at resumes and doing non-billable work. Um, and it starts to impact productivity and morale. And I think, you know, you you can't get away from it. So even if you think, well, I just want the smartest people here who are going to do the best work. Um, and that's really what I'm looking for. If you don't have a cohesive team and a cohesive fit, it will start to impact everything that's happening. And it will start to impact your bottom line. And so I think that's getting more and more traction in our industry. And people are seeing that more clearly. And so when I can come in with, with a solution um, to help alleviate some of those concerns, I think I'm met with open arms. Um, I have not had an issue where, you know, if anything, a potential client is they're, they're maybe not quite there yet. So they know they need this. They're just not sure, you know, who to bring in or what to do. Um, and typically what happens is three, six, nine months later, I'll get an email or a call from them that says, oh, hey, can we, I think we're at a place, can we revisit, you know, what some of the workshops and things that you, you offer are? Because I think we're ready to kind of take that step. So people are listening, you know, and they're in. Um, what's one piece of advice that you'd give a lawyer who wants to start developing the, the non-technical legal side of their skill set? Like what, what's a good first step? So I would always say, plug it in your calendar. Um, you have, you have to be cognizant and aware of it. And it might even sound counterintuitive. Like, shouldn't I develop the skill first? That doesn't matter because if you develop the skill and then you aren't practicing it, it doesn't matter. So getting in the habit of putting relationship building and networking on your calendar. So the first thing I do with all clients is I tell them to really think about their day. I need 15 minutes a day, or I need an hour a week, figure out however is going to work best for you. And I need you to put it in your calendar and it needs to be a recurring appointment that you honor just like you honor other appointments. So if a conflict comes up, you can move it, but you have to give me that hour a week or that 15 minutes a day. And then from there, you can start coming up with a very short to-do list that you have to accomplish in those 15 minutes. And it could be update my LinkedIn profile. Um, It could be send a handwritten note to someone that I met you know, that a week ago or somebody that I've been, you know, really meaning to reach back out to. And I just keep forgetting. So as soon as you get in the habit of like this dedicated time is only for me to build relationships and maintain them, it starts to become 
something that you think about every day and what, what can go on the list? What can I do within that 15 minutes? And you'd be surprised 15 minutes a day, an hour a week, you can accomplish a lot when that's all you're focused on. And so that's kind of the first step. That's the baby step number one to get you in a place where this becomes habitual. Mm. And I, I, I'm totally into templates. Um, the, the idea that I, I, um, I think people think just be creative, just innovate, just <laughs> lead or just develop or just network or just market. You know, it's just like you sit down and make it happen, but you actually have to rent the space and then show up to it and then work on the skills and then through habits and, and sort of taking best practices, um, then you get to develop that thing and it presents itself in your waking life is, but, but I, I, it's so amazing that we want those skills first, but we don't want to put the time aside to develop them. And the time is the most essential thing, not the skill itself. That, that is worth the cost of entry right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and when you're talking too about those templates, you know, there's lots of, I mean, we had, um, uh, Kelly Hoey. And yeah. she was, she was basically saying the same thing. It was a little bit more focused on LinkedIn, but you know, you could do something simple. Like if you go to a, a legal conference and there's a really great presentation, you can do a little write up, post it on LinkedIn, and then tag a couple people in your network who it might be relevant for. Like, Hey, I was at this thing. I thought you'd be interested in it. And, That's and it's a her, simple thing, but it's thoughtful. And her point was share it with your associates at your firm. Start networking with the people that you work with. Yep. Yeah. Like hers was really, really easy because you're like, oh, yeah, I, I'm not even working on these connections here. It's like 85 percent of people, uh, sh uh, you know, lawyers will leave their, you know, law firm gigs after five years because they're not offered developmental um, opportunities. They also haven't sought them out, perhaps. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, do, do, do you see that? Do people, do people kind of ignore the network that's right there with them at work? Yes. So I will get a lot of, but I don't have time. I'm not going to join another organization. <laughs> right. I'm busy. All of, you know, yes. All of that sort of thing. And then I can come up with seven opportunities internally. Like you don't even have to leave this building hmm. for you to form relationships. Like, do you, have you had lunch with everybody in your practice group? Do all the important people in this office know that you exist? Have you sat by a different person at a meeting than you normally sit by? Have you contributed a new idea at your practice group meeting? Have you written an article for the internal blog? Have you tried to get something published? You know, I mean, there's so many things that you can do that don't require you to join an organization, you know? Right, right. I think people are worried that they, that I don't know how to ride a little mini motorcycle and I don't know if a fez will fit on me and, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to be in the parade. And you're like, it, I, I think we're thinking of the Elks Lodge is what you're thinking of. <laughs> Stephanie, this is fantastic. Those pieces of advice, all of this is amazing. People should go check out The Other 85. If people want to learn more about you, Stephanie, Hannah, how can they learn about you on the internet? So I have a website, theother85.net, and I'm active on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'm either Stephanie Hanna or Stephanie the Other 85 on those platforms. And I would love to connect. And also on the website, if you want, there's a um, top five networking mistakes that lawyers make. It's a free downloadable. And so you just put in your email address and it comes right to you. And it's got some more short bite-sized tips that you can implement right away. Five questions we ask everyone. What was the last book you read? Oh, all right. Hold on. My, my phone cut out, but here I am. The last book that I read. Yes. Um, give, give and Take by Adam Grant. How to, so my, a big thing I talk about is being a giver and a taker and networking, um, not being a taker, being a giver. And that book breaks down the science behind it. I always knew it was right, but I, I could never really articulate why other than I said so. And so much science behind the networks and the the depth and breadth of networks for givers versus takers. Number two, what's your favorite place? Favorite place? Um, can I say the gym? I mean, I have a one year old and a two year old, so like when I get there, it's really quite the oasis. <laughs> oh, I gotta right get now. out. <laughs> Go yeah, for we'll it. Talk, yeah, we, we identify with that absolutely. The elliptical <laughs> is paradise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Number three. 
What sites, blogs, newsletters, or podcasts do you regularly check in with? Um, so my new one is the Oprah Super Soul podcast. That has become like the food for my soul lately. Um, and I don't even know if that's her tagline, but that is totally how I feel. Awesome. Um, it has just been so much good personal development content on there. So I would definitely encourage people to check it out. And a lot of it feeds into the other 85, believe it or not. Like you have to have, have a little bit of confidence to do some of these things. And so if you can really dig into the why, why am I maybe not as confident? What can I do to help build that confidence? It translates um, into so many areas, including your relationships and your networks. Nice. Okay. Toughest question on the list. Number four. <laughs> If you were stranded on a desert island and could only pick one condiment to take with you, what would it be? Mm. I mean, it's tough. Has anyone ever been creative? I mean, ranch is what comes to mind. I feel like I can oh, do with that's that. That's very but traditional. I mean, that's so. Well, yeah, that's that, 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 so that, that's creative at all, but that's just what came to my mind. Ranch is Absolutely. delicious. We've had people say all kinds of stuff, surprising amount of alcohol. A lot of people view alcohol as a condiment. I'm not sure um, uh, yeah, if, if that's in the rules or not, but, you know, uh, they're lawyers. You, I'm, yeah. You know, I'm not going over there for a cookout. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> what are you putting on your hot tub? Uh, anyway. Um, okay. At the end of the list here, after a long day or a long week at work, how do you relax and unwind? I try to two different things. One is either gym or going for a walk outside with a good podcast. And the other one, which has really started as I flip my mindset, um, is to try and write some content for the upcoming week based on what really inspired me the past week. Um, and at first I used to look at, and maybe you can appreciate this in your roles, but all the content that I had to create for my own business was overwhelming. Um, and I had a schedule and I was doing all these very rigid things, which are important and kept me on track. Um, but I found that when I was inspired, if I had a long week or if I kind of had an aha moment that I thought, oh, this would be really good to share with people, kind of writing it just from the heart in the moment um, was a really great way to kind of put an end cap on the week and then also share some good tidbits um, with people who were interested in listening. For show notes, links, and info, go to thelawsonpodcast.com or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Be sure to leave us a review and rating in iTunes or wherever you find the you listen to. Until next week. Stay Lawson. Awesome.